Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump took the spotlight from the very beginning of this week's first GOP debate after a question about whether or not he would run as an independent if he's not the party's nominee. I cannot say I have to respect the person that if it's not me, the person that wins. If I do win and I'm leading by quite a bit, uh, that's what I want to do. I can totally make that pledge. If I'm the nominee, I will pledge I will <laughs> not run as an independent. But the hits didn't stop there. In the most viewed primary debate ever, the Donald continued to throw punches. Our leaders are stupid. Our politicians are stupid. And the Mexican government is much smarter, much sharper, much more cunning. And they send the bad ones over because they don't want to pay for them. They don't want to take care of them. Why should they when the stupid leaders of the United States will do it for them? All right, Jack, what did you make of Mr. Trump's performance? He may have stolen the show, but did he win the debate? I'll tell you, Mars, I'm getting close to a, an endorsement of Mr. Trump. <laughs> I said I wouldn't endorse anybody. I'm getting real close. I'm warming up to the Donald. I think he did fantastically well. I, I actually was very proud of his answer. He gave the right an answer to whether he would challenge the nominee. It was kind of a convoluted explanation, but that's the right answer. I think the right explanation would have been you always have to do what's right for the country at the time, con country ahead of party. Trump is the only one on the stage with any charisma. I don't think there's another person on that stage with, with charisma even in his league. The real question for Trump, Morris, we're talking about this off air, when do you turn the electricity off? Roger Stone, his great strategist, obviously they want to keep it going. Trump has the ability to be a subtle, serious, sophisticate. He's a very bright guy. He's choosing not to do that. In some sense, he plays a character of himself. He wants to keep the party going. Mark Levine, he needed to kind of tone it down for his summation remarks. That way he could have won me and a lot of Americans, but it was the same bombastic Trump even up until the very end, don't you think? Well, first of all, that's not who Donald Trump is. Tone it down. That's not what he is. That's not what he's trying but to do. But even in the summer, your final remarks, you know, hit it home, be different, offer some, yeah, some perspective he, and, and he, some specifics. you got to remember, Mars, he's Mr. Red Meat. That is why he's winning. He appeals to people who are angry, uh, people who are more uneducated, people who really want want to hit back against the establishment and that's what he does he's hitting hard I don't know maybe a year from now if he's still doing okay he Mark, might tone it down then the numbers don't Jack, bear Mark, that out Mark this, so here's this, the problem the numbers don't bear it out Donald if you look Trump's at Trump's role 25 he's the star of the race. you can say you can Democrats are running around saying well Trump appeals to bigots and stupid people and things like that when you hit 25 percent you'll probably be higher than that when the poll the new polls come out on Monday when you hit 25 percent you're Jack you're I said much broader than bigots angry. in the Republican Party. He appeals to angry people. I'll tell you, there are things he said that appealed to me. A lot of his attacks I, on the establishment, I, attacks against money in politics. I really like to hear that. He supports universal health care. Look, I, mean, I agree this is with the guy who had some good I points. Just, I just wanted to hear more serious talk when you wrap up a two hour debate. I wanted you to, to hit He's a home not run. A well, serious more you're right. A home run. You're right, Morris. I think you're right on the money. You ask exactly the right question, and you're right about that. The only issue is, again, when do you turn off the electricity? At some point, if Trump wants the nomination, if he wants to be president, he He's going to have to be that subtle, serious, sophisticated, specific. Yeah, that's never happened, guy. Jack. Well, but the time is, to turn it off was the end of the debate. All right. While the debate touched on illegal immigration and the economy, candidates also expressed their views on social issues. I just went to a wedding of a friend of mine who happens to be gay. Uh, because somebody doesn't think the way I do, doesn't mean that I can't care about them or I can't love them. So if one of my daughters happened to be that, of course I would love them and I would accept them. Many applauded John Kasich's remarks, saying he struck a chord with young Republicans who increasingly support same-sex marriage. Mark, what do you make of his comments? Did he strike the right tone? I think so. I actually think John Kasich was the clear winner of last night's debate. He seemed to be oh. the only adult on the stage, the only one talking about actual compassion, and talking about the fiscally conservative aspects of compassion, that when you treat people fairly, it actually saves money. It's fascinating how far the Republican Party has changed on same-sex marriage. Just four years ago, they were booing a gay service 
service member, a gay soldier who'd served his country. They were booing him on stage. Yeah, now right. they the support same-sex marriage. Yeah, Kasich, I think John Kasich is reaching out to the, to he did the very people well. who actually care about You're right. Kasich did very well among prospective Democratic voters. The problem is he's involved in a Republican primary. Kasich actually started good and he closed very poorly by praising Donald Trump as the number 10 man. You win strategically when you praise the front runner because he's not yet competing with a front runner. It was a very smart move, but the, the business of getting into the gay issue, he should never have done that. Being what do you mean he should never have done that? Are you saying he should have shunned his daughter? It, it's not that's, that. That's not going to Mark, win I'm not votes talking in Republican substance. Party. You, you have to understand, I'm not talking substance, I'm talking politics. When you get I'm into politics. I'm talking politics too. What the, I'm telling you evangelicals is this issue is in Iowa. Passed. This Evangelicals in Iowa and South Carolina don't want to hear that. Politically, it was not smart. All right, you know? another hot topic was Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton and the controversy surrounding her campaign. For the cyber attack with Russia the other day, it's pr sad to, to think right now, but probably the Russian and Chinese government know more about Hillary Clinton's email server than do the members of the United States Congress. <laughs> Got it, but that was pretty good. Other candidates continued to pounce on Hillary's honesty problem and her affiliation with President Obama. But Mark, did any Republican stand out as someone who could take on Hillary in a general election? I didn't think so. I, I thought the, the likely Republican nominee, who I still insist is Jeb Bush, came off as basically boring and uninteresting, mostly because they didn't ask him any tough questions like they asked the other candidates. Uh, I don't think any of them showed they could take uh, Hillary Clinton toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There were a few cheap shots, a few cheap lines. Uh, you know, but we had Chris Christie being criticized for having asked Obama for aid for New Jersey. I mean, really cheap stuff. I want to see substance. Why don't they go after her policies? I think because they know her policies are popular. Jack, I think maybe if you ran for president. I, well, I, 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 haven't I haven't announced yet, Morris. I think, uh, I think Scott, Wa excuse me, I think um, uh, Rand Paul and Chris Christie definitely improved their status. I, I look for both of them to move up. I think with that exchange, both men move up in the polls. I think Trump was a clear, clear winner. I actually disagree with the majority of the commentariat on this. I think Rubio was a loser. I think Rubio, although he did so well, he speaks so well, he's almost the perfect guy. He looks too young, and he's just, uh, he's, too much unduly earnest. Rubio just doesn't have that wit. He doesn't have that charm. And I think you need that to uh, be president. Well, I thought he brought some gravitas. What do you think, Mark? Well, I actually, that, liked Rubio. Uh, this is one issue where I agree with Jack. Actually, that's exactly the word I used before the show. He's very earnest. Uh, I, I liked Rubio. I thought he actually came off very well. I disagree with a lot of what he has to say. But in a country where the rough and tumble of a wrestling match, you heard the audience, is what matters and wit and tough punches. Yeah, he didn't do a lot of that. What he came off was with substantive, and I don't think Republicans want substance. I think they want the flashy attacks. Rubio is actually close to being out of the race. He's only at 5%, which is about half of where even Ben Carson is. I think Rubio within a month could be out of this race. I still think that he offered more gravitas than I was expecting out of him. All right, Jack, who was the biggest loser of the night? Oh, biggest loser, really. It's hard to say more. So I think the whole, the, the winner is Trump, and then at a second tier, uh, Rand Paul and Chris Christie. And really, the whole rest of the field was, was a loser. I thought Scott Walker and Jeb Bush did particularly bad. Both of them come across as duds. Mark, uh, the biggest loser? I think it was Scott Walker. I think what Scott Walker said that he would let a woman die uh, rather than let her have an abortion, that, that basically he preferred a fetus's life to a young mother. Uh, I think he lost a lot of people, even people who are pro-life. All right, the next GOP debate, there's Walker as we wrap this up. The next geo, the debate takes place on the 16th, a month before Democrats plan to hit the stage for the first time. And former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley thinks it's a bad idea. And I think we're hurting ourselves if we try to circle the wagons and limit debate. I mean, what is this? The World Wrestling Federation? This is the Democratic Party. And we need to have Democratic debates about the solutions that will actually serve America's families. It's not wrestling? I thought well, it, it was. looked like wrestling last Some night. Some analysts say the shortened debate period could be good, but it could also be disastrous if one of the candidates makes a mistake. Mark, do you think O'Malley is right? Why is your party waiting so late? You know, there's going to be six Democratic debates. There's going to be seven Republican debates. I don't think the difference between six and seven matters much. Any candidate behind in the polls wants more debates. That's always true. Any candidate who's ahead doesn't want more debates. I actually think Jack will agree with me on this, and I don't think it has anything to do with Republicans or Democrats. Well, I do 
I do agree with Mark. We have some agreement here, but presuming that Mark doesn't enter the Democratic primary, I think the, <laughs> the likely Democratic nominee, Morrison, I said this two years ago, the likely Democratic nominee has not yet entered that race, and that's jumping Joe Biden, the vice president. Biden's an ambitious man. He's been running for president since 1988. He was knocked out because of the plagiarism thing. Really, since 1970, he's had this on his mind. Extremely ambitious Joe Biden man. could challenge Doesn't Hillary, wear it on his sleeve, but I predict. I, I predict he won't enter the race, although I admit he might. And I admit if he does, it would be more of a challenge. I still think Hillary Clinton is the likely nominee and Jeb Bush is the Republican nominee. All right, let's move on. President Obama spent much of the week lobbying for his nuclear deal with Iran, but now incoming Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says he's against it. The White House already faces an uphill battle. Mark, could Schumer's stance cause Obama to lose his veto power? I don't think so. I think uh, even if the resolution passes to disapprove, uh, President Obama will veto and there won't be a two-thirds override. To me, what Democrats like Schumer are doing, and I think it's actually good for the process, is they're encouraging President Obama to do unilateral things, uh, much like Dennis Ross, in fact, wrote about in a very good Washington Post article everyone should read. Uh, there are unilateral things President Obama can do to make the deal stronger, and I think Democrats like Schumer are pushing him still to get a better deal. I think that's a good thing. Now, Jack, if Republicans in some Democrats are able to topple this agreement. What's next? Won't your party be on the line to fix this? That seems like a lot of pressure. I don't think so, Morris. I don't think the Republicans want anything to do with this. I think they have to. I don't think you'll have. Uh, there's got to be some kind of action in the Senate. But I think Republicans are going to do everything they can to kill this agreement. I don't think they want it to survive. I think that's the right policy. Are they going to bomb Iran if it doesn't, Jack? I, yes. I, I think at the end yes, of the day. Yes, they are going to bomb Iran. If you bomb, have a Republican. Bomb, 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 Iran. Remember that? If All you right. have a Republican president, Morris, I think sooner or later you're going to come to the realization that the only way to stop a nuclearized Iran is with military force. There's no other way to do it. Great. That'll help my 401k to start a war. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. All right. Before we go, let's circle back to the Hillary situation. While she was a Topic of discussion during the GOP debate, Hillary was taking selfies with celebrities like Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Mark, President Obama used a lot of star power in his campaigns. Can Clinton tap into Hollywood to boost her numbers? <laughs> well, listen, uh, the Republicans have all the billionaires and the polluters and the Koch brothers and all the ones who destroy the environment. And uh, the only rich people that, uh, that Democrats can reliably turn to tend out to be in Hollywood. That's our system. That's our system where money buys access. Frankly, like I said, that's the one thing I agree with Donald Trump last night. He said he wants to stop a system where money buys access. Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump agree on that. Jack, Hillary, last word. The only, uh, the only good press Hillary can get these days is when she poses with Kim Kardashian, so I look for more of the same. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, the best political on panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Morris. Thanks, Morris. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.